Our conversation with Ian Brown is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people here on WCCS. Good morning, Ian. Uh, Good morning. Thanks for having me on today. It is our pleasure to have you on the air with us today. We have been, of course, following the situation at IRMC as we've gone through this coronavirus pandemic. Um, Some great restrictions in place, and I use the word great restrictions because they really are. They're necessary, and IRMC was right on board right from the very start, keeping people safe. And um, I guess that's where I want to start the conversation with you. It is time for folks to get back and to take care of their health and every service is now restored at IRMC, and that includes cardiology, yes? Yes, absolutely. Um, we've, uh, we have some enhanced uh, screening for patient safety. It's also for staff safety and any vendors or visitors that come to the hospital. So everybody coming in is uh, being screened, asked if they have symptoms. Uh, we're doing temperature checks. Uh, employees are all wearing uh, masks whenever they're in clinical areas just to help uh, uh, prevent the uh, spread of infection. Ian, for folks who have not been to the hospital for a couple of months, uh, haven't been on the campus at all, what's the experience like for them? What are they going when they pull into the parking lot? They get out of their car. What happens? Well, I think the biggest change is that um, we we funneling we're funneling patients into one of two entrances. If they're coming in through the emergency room, that's obviously one entrance, and the other entrance is coming in through the the main entrance of the hospital. And we do have screeners in place in both areas. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to do the best that we can to be safe, uh, you know, making sure that uh, the patients are screened uh, to, you know, notice if they're having any types of fevers or any other symptoms uh, that could be related to COVID-19. And uh, if they are, you know, we're, we're directing them to the emergency room or to their primary care doctors to, uh, you know, have some follow-up testing to be done. Uh, and we're trying to you know, prevent those patients from, you know, coming into the general areas of the hospital for routine testing. Um, they may need more specialized testing. Ian Brown is the manager of IRMC Cardiology. And for folks who have heart problems, uh, who have uh, heart appointments, the various services that are offered at IRMC, uh, first of all, those services have been greatly expanded in the last five or six years. And second of all, Uh, that's not something you want to mess around with. You want to get your heart taken care of right from the start. Oh, absolutely. And uh, just to, you know, put a little plug in, uh, May is uh, Stroke Awareness Month. And, um, you know, we are, you know, committed uh, at at IRMC uh, as being a uh, designated stroke center, and we have been since 2014. So, you know, it is important to, you know, Talk about the uh, the importance of you know knowing what the signs and symptoms of a stroke are and educating ourselves to you know what those might be and what some of the risk factors of stroke are and you know all of that uh, ties into cardiovascular so we you know we focus on that a lot and we uh, are also you know designated as a center that we can you know test for uh, stroke and uh, to treat patients very well. All right, so let's go over some of those protocols. What are the things people should be looking for? What should we do if we feel that we might be suffering from a stroke? Okay, um, well, the the first thing to notice is that, uh, you know, a stroke is very similar to like a heart attack. You know, it's, it's, it's a sudden thing. Uh, you need to get help immediately, and we recommend calling 911. It is the fifth leading cause of death, and it's a major cause of serious disability in adults throughout the U.S., Um, You know, so there are some signs and symptoms that you need to look for, and, you know, a couple of them are things like confusion or weakness, a facial droop, changes with your vision, uh, difficulty speaking, difficulty walking, numbness and tingling, uh, a feeling of dizziness, difficult understanding or comprehending what is being spoken, and a severe headache. Um, So, you know, we try to, you know, make an acronym to try and help people remember those things. And it used to be fast, and now we've changed it to be fast. So it's balance, eyesight, facial drooping, arm weakness, and speech difficulty. And the T is for time, which means you need to call 911 right away when you're having any of those symptoms. Now I'm going to have to get a new refrigerator magnet because mine only says fast. (laughs) <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try to hook you up with some. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's a great idea. But it, it, timeliness, uh, that last thing that you mentioned, timeliness when you are suffering a stroke is really, really important, isn't it? Yes, it's absolutely critical. 
uh, the sooner that you can get into a, a place like IRMC that can treat you definitively uh, with, you know, if a patient is having an ischemic stroke and we know the time that it started and they're a candidate to have the, uh, the, the thrombolytics or the clot-busting drugs, uh, a lot of times we can resolve most of, if not all, of the symptoms of the stroke by giving that medication. Uh, we also have alternatives here where we can, um, you know, urgently ship you to a, a, a tertiary care center like uh, somewhere down in Pittsburgh that can do uh, more advanced neurodiagnostic and, uh, you know, retrieval methods to actually get into the circulation of the brain and remove a blood clot. All right. So but you mentioned... is definitely a factor. You mentioned ischemic strokes. Uh, there are two types of strokes. Uh, explain. Okay. There are, there are two types of strokes. One is ischemic stroke, and what that means is uh, there's a blockage in one of the arteries that feeds the brain. Uh, can be like a blood clot or something like that. Uh, the other type of stroke is called a hemorrhagic stroke, and that type of stroke occurs whenever that artery ruptures and actually bleeds into the area of the brain. It causes swelling and some damage to the brain. All right, and uh, both are obviously very, very serious and need your attention right away. I want to talk about safety, about IRMC, and feeling comfortable going onto the campus, going into the facility itself. We've had Dr. Clark on, we've had uh, Dr. Bailwick on, and others talking about how right now there's probably no safer place to be than IRMC. What's your take? Oh, I agree with you completely. <clears throat> um, we've had a lot of efforts that just uh, focus on, you know, the safe treatment of patients, how we can safely move patients, you know, to prevent infection, or if we have a patient that has a known infection, uh, to make sure that we're safely transporting them to, to protect others. Um, we have, uh, you know, just for our outpatient areas coming into the cardiology department or coming into the lab or diagnostic imaging, even our outpatient surgical areas, um, you know, we, we have measures in place to, you know, maintain social distancing. Um, you know, surgical masks are worn by all the staff. Um, you know, if you come and you don't have your own mask, we will, you know, try and make sure that we provide a, a mask to you to, to protect you as well. Um, but, uh, you know, we have a lot of things put in place right now, and it uh, has been a great team effort um, to establish all these protocols and procedures to minimize risk to uh, patients and staff and visitors. Um, we're still, uh, to date, we're still having da daily uh, briefings about COVID-19 and our readiness, the, uh, the level of our supplies, our testing capabilities. Um, and we've had some, you know, some great physician leadership guiding all of these efforts. Um, you know, I think every call that we're on, I think there's at least three doctors on the line, if not more. Uh, but they've been, you know, involved in all these da daily briefings. Uh, there's been special subcommittees to, you know, plan on how we're going to reopen and uh, make sure that we have the, the, the safest systems set up in place uh, to try and, number one, reopen and get these necessary you know, testing services completed, uh, but also uh, do it in an efficient manner. Ian Brown is with us this morning. He's the manager of IRMC Cardiology. I ask you to describe the experience of just arriving at IRMC and what people will go through. And while cardiology has very many different aspects, uh, when people are visiting this department or that at IRMC, are they going to notice great differences uh, in the way that they are greeted, in the way that they are handled and, and conducted through the hospital? Well, we hope they notice some subtle differences, and that's the safety measures that we put in place. Um, you know, by, you know, social distancing, we've kind of cleared out some of the chairs in our waiting areas and spaced them out safely. Um, but as far as uh, how you're going to be treated as a person, I, I hope that uh, you're not going to notice any difference there, and I hope you uh, get excellent treatment and excellent care from every single person that you meet. Um, you know, everybody is, you know, really excited about getting folks back into the hospital uh, and, you know, we want to make sure that uh, everyone feels safe and comfortable when they do come in. So I, I think the staff is, uh, you know, very well prepared, and you shouldn't notice any kind of uh, uh, bumps or any hiccups in there that uh, would cause you to think that we don't know what we're doing. Ian, take a moment to brag on the department. There have been such a, there's been such a great expansion of services, and IRMC's reputation has just blossomed under all of these uh, things. Um, I'm sure that has to make you feel very, very good about the people you work with and the services that are offered. Oh, absolutely. The uh, cardiology department has grown uh, you know, greatly in the, the past several years. Uh, I couldn't be more excited to be here for that, too. 
Um, as you know, we've had, you know, Dr. McDowell and Dr. Greg have been here for quite a while. Um, we have a new, a couple new additions actually with, uh, uh, Dr. Lewis and Dr. Linton Frazier and Dr. Linton Frazier actually, uh, helps expand us a little bit. She's uh, an EP doc. So she'll be uh, doing some more studies with, uh, you know, looking at, uh, arrhythmias and irregularities of the heart and being able to place, you know, pacemaker devices and ICDs for us. Um, you know, we've also had uh, Dr. Pillai that started up the, the cath lab and the PCI program, uh, which is almost four years ago now. Wow. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have, have had uh, some tremendous success there. Um, our, our department has grown uh, over the years, and, you know, we've, we've seen increase in, uh, you know, volumes of patients and increase in types of uh, testing that we can do. Um, with the addition, like I said, of Dr. Linton Frazier, we're, we're looking at doing some, uh, some new and exciting things here and be able to offer some new services that uh, previously had not been offered here at Indiana. Yeah, it's amazing. Just tremendous advances at IRMC having to do with cardiology care. All right, Ian, so what do you say to that person who has been putting off their medical care, especially when it comes to the heart and especially when it comes to stroke? Don't wait for those things. That was, would, would be what I would say, but what would you say? I would tell them that they're too important to wait. Um, th- that person uh, just by themselves is too important to wait for any of that stuff. Um, you need to make sure that you're taking care of your heart, taking care of your body, and if you need some kind of specialized testing or if you're having some kinds of symptoms, it, you know, don't be afraid to come to the hospital. Don't be afraid to call your uh, your family doctor. Um, they, they're all involved with us. They all know what's going on and, uh, they know that we can safely treat patients here. Uh, we can get you in and get you out. And, uh, you know, the, you know, for the diagnostic testing, you know, there's very few, uh, you know, roadblocks to coming in and getting that stuff done. Um, you know, we are well prepared to provide these services and it is genuinely safe. And how great is it that they can do it here in Indiana rather than having to drive to Pittsburgh to get it done? Oh, it's fantastic, um, and, and we do a great job here. Uh, it's, it, it's, you know, just very refreshing for me to see this place grow the way that it has. He is Ian Brown, the folks at IRMC Cardiology, as well as everybody at Indiana Regional Medical Center waiting to serve you. Ian, thanks so much for being with us. All right, thank you, Todd. It's been great talking to you. Have a great day. All right, you too. Thanks. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160 and 101.1 FM, 1.1 FM.